Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. If you're watching on YouTube, you can already tell this is our Halloween episode. I thought I would dress up in my Sunday best. I'm wearing my Bigfoot costume, which is literally just a Bigfoot. You should have um, painted the toenail something. Oh my god, that would be so cute to have like little acrylics coming off of the top. It's kind of a, I'm not being fresh, it's kind of a basic Halloween costume because it's just like a cover up one, but... Now that I'm looking at it, I think if you really wanted to elevate it, you could... So you're wearing... If you're not watching on YouTube, it's one of those, like... How would you describe it? Like a fabric cover-up costume. It's like a poncho. Like it's fitting like a poncho that I put my head through. Yeah, and I purchased these costumes that we're both wearing for a Dunkin' ad. So it's not like... I'm not like shitting on the costume that you chose. We just had it in the yeah, bin. I literally didn't pick it. I don't want to be fresh here, but I'm just saying like now that I'm looking at it, I think you could really add some pipe cleaner hair mm. on the toes. Mm -hmm. Maybe give her some sort of fun manicure. Yeah, I could do construction paper like a French tip. Oh my God, or a bloody foot. Ew. Well, I'm just saying if you want to make it spooky. Yeah, I could put a little scab on it. Oh no. Or maybe a foot tattoo, like an infinity sign that says like, believe and trust. That would be cute. I love that. Or a sink never swim anchor. Or swim never sink. What's that, that classic tattoo? Can't hold me down. Can't anchor me to the ground. An anchor tattoo is something so common from where I'm from. It's like every like basic girl in New Bedford has an anchor tattoo. And I'm and, and that's just the fact, guys. Everybody knows it was a bad tattoo. I have a bad tattoo. We all have a bad tattoo. Yeah, I have two bad tattoos that I completely regret. Got it the day after my 18th birthday. But we don't have to talk about that. But what, So that's enough about my big foot. You're dressed up as a cockroach. <laughs> I know I'm that. feeling I'm feeling a little roachy today. You are feeling roachy today. Are you comfortable in that? It's looking like I don't know how that would fit anybody. No, I'm actually so uncomfortable. I'm doing it for the bit. It, it, so there's an elastic band around where the head is coming out, and I'm wearing a hat. It's pushing down on my skull at a very intense rate. And this costume sat on the ground for three weeks in front of our window in our guest room, and Buffy made it a little bed. Because she's so cute. And it's like, obviously, it's so soft. And she like wants to lay in the sun. But it's covered in cat hair. And I can just feel it tickling my nose. I really feel like a roach. Yeah. Just like a little dirty, <laughs> squirmy bitch. I was just going to say, it's literally, you've got the crumbs of the floor, the cat hair. I did my best to lint roll it. I really did. We no, went you did. through like it's, 30 sheets. It's fine. It's, it is what it is. We had to dress up in costume. This is the Halloween episode. And we hope that you guys are also participating in the spooky fun this week. Um, these aren't our only costumes. No, they're not. We have a lot. We have better costumes coming. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I know. I'm so behind this year on my Halloween like costume creation. I always make costumes. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a thing I really enjoy doing. But we've been traveling so much. We've been super busy. So we should we tell them what else? we're planning to be this week yeah i think we should wait what's our first costume so i don't know if you guys watch pen 15 but it's a show that's on hulu we are absolutely obsessed with it i wanted to watch it for the longest time and you're like no that looks so dumb and then you happen to be in the room and you were like you snuck a little bit closer to the tv as i was watching it and then i heard you giggle and you're like so what it's funny so we're obsessed with the show so we're gonna be why do i want to keep calling every two lead females i want to call them alex and ani and that's not right it's anna and, and maya and maya thank you yeah so i i was not interested in the show at first i thought it was kind of cringy because technically the, the the premise of the show is like these two women who are playing themselves at age 13 in like the early 2000s and it's all about like growing up in the preteen teenage years in that time of life but it's weird because the entire ensemble cast are actual 13 year olds and they're adults playing 13 but physically they do resemble they look like they're 13 they have like fake braces and like the mannerisms but the writing is so funny i'm laughing every second of that show it's actually hysterical yeah and it's one of those shows that there's only two seasons and they're not bringing it back right no they they felt like they did their mission and it wasn't like it wasn't renewed they were they're just choosing not to write anymore they're like no we're good it's done you know what i respect that because there are some shows that didn't do that but anyway um that's one of those shows that we have half a season left of the entire series and we're just 
we're not ready. We're not ready to watch it. I mean, I'm excited, but once we watch it, then it's just like, it's over for I, real. I also have, like I've said before, so much TV that's going on this fall and there is going to be a time where there's a lull. And I think that'll be the moment to bring it back because I don't want to rush through it. Yeah. I want to enjoy the last moments of Anna and Maya. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be Maya. And I'm going to be Anna. If you do watch the show, but if you don't, um, you'll see on Instagram very soon. But we're going to finish it. The only thing we have to do is bejewel these like hats. Yeah. The, we bought everything for it. It's a very specific look from one of the episodes where they're doing a fashion show and everything's like rhinestone and bedazzled. Oh my God. And I forgot about the thong. Yeah. You'll see the thong picture too, guys. Don't you worry. Oh God. We got to plan that out. But then our other costume. Oh yeah. We're going as my favorite category, um, chain restaurants. Yeah. I'm going to be Ruby too. Tuesdays. And I'm going to be Applebee's. So this is my vision. You guys can tell us what you think. So we're not, so I'm going to, I bought a black shirt from Michael's and I've never used the iron on things before, but Jonathan feels very confident in the iron on space. Yeah. So he's going to like give us the tutorial. So my idea is to wear a black, black t-shirt and I'm going to iron on some sort of calendar or a Tuesday focused picture, mm-hmm. jewel my shirt in red rhinestones, aka the rubies. And then I'm going to wear a feather boa and I'm going to be Ruby Tuesday. Just like a sexy girl. No, it's not a feather boa. It's literally giant christmas like foil tinsel it's oh, very it's like, impressive yeah it's like tinsel garland and it's because i was at michael's and i thought it was nicer and i thought it was gonna be really scratchy but it's not yeah so i think it's fun how are you gonna do applebee's um so i have like a bumblebee striped shirt i absolutely hate horizontal stripes so i already know i have to mentally prepare myself to, to see myself in horizontal stripes but i don't know what i'm gonna iron on maybe the logo i'm not really sure but i also have the um the antennae And I'm going to have a little basket filled with apples, probably Granny Smith. I haven't decided yet. And then I'm going to have the um, the dollar. What does it call it? The apple. The dollarita. The dollarita, which is concerning, honestly. They have so so. It's like actually a really popular trend right now. I I honestly can foresee your costume going potentially. Dare I say it? Viral. (laughs) We're gonna go viral. So even like actress Beck, she just did like a whole bit on her TikTok. One of my my TikTok friends, she did one as like the your Applebee server like cutting you off for the dollar arena. Like it's such a trend right now. Um, I am concerned. My favorite meme that I saw was you won't get the COVID shot, but you'll drink a dollar arena from Applebee's. (laughs) And to that I say true right true. it's like that's got to be straight poison but they they don't just do a dollar vita they do other things throughout the year that are also a dollar i haven't been to applebee's in so long we should go there's a giant applebee's not too far from camp shady birch no there's a yeah there's so many applebee's in new york it's crazy but the thing is people really shit on applebee's as do i like the main chef is a microwave but that's okay i think to do well at any chain restaurant is to know what to order. Mm. Think to yourself, what can Applebee's do best? Stick in the fried food category. Mm-hmm. Don't get some salmon rice broccoli dish. You're going to be upset. You're going to get the mini mozzarella moons, the chicken fingers, whatever they can kind of garnish with that's tan. If the food is tan, order it from Applebee's. Yeah, beige is best. We went, we went to a Chili's in an airport and I got the appetizer sampler because I knew they wouldn't let me down. Mm-hmm. And it did not let me down. It didn't. They needed to change that fryer later oil, though. That was tasting like a little too much, like too many meals beforehand. I secretly like dirty oil. Ew. I okay, want but to there's s- a fine line between like dirty oil and then it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this has been in here for months. There was this place that was around the corner from where I used to live and they used to double fry their fries and it tasted like the perfect too old fry later oil. A double fried fry is truly what you want. And it's really just because they had a bunch of college students around. So they were like, we got to make a shit ton of fries. And then when people would order it, they would drop the basket. Love it. It's convenient for them. Wait, that's genius. Exactly. And it was fried so perfectly. But then... Because you probably could drop them really fast and you don't need to fry them that long that second time. It's just to get them hot and crispy and like crunchy. Exactly. Oh my God, that's genius. And it was double fried and it was they were just so good. And then what? the health inspector came. Was he pissed? The health inspector was like, you cannot do that. Like, you really, you can't be doing that. So they had to change it up. So then I'm getting raw fries. Oh, no. What was the place called? Do you want to give them a little shout out? 
No, they're closed now. What was it called? Though? It was called Mama Angelina's. It was in Center City, Philadelphia. It was across the street from the Standing O at the Double Tree Hotel off of uh, Broad Street. I want to write an entire novel about Mama Angelina. Mm. She sounds like a woman I would trust with my fries. First time I went there was Halloween. Oh my God. Oh, wow. And I saw Peter Pan and he threw up. What were you dressed up as that year? I don't think I was dressed up at all. I think I was just blacked out. Oh, your costume was just blackout. No, I was pers- I just drank too much. Oh, were you wearing black? Probably. You wore a lot of black back then, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You yeah. still do. I probably You're was. still in all black. Today. Oh, my God. I literally look like a stagehand under here. You're my little goth king. That's, I can't help it. I can't help it. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. We can't wait to see your costume. Yeah. I really enjoy seeing anybody's costume online. I love it. I think, like, basic or not, I just love people who get in the fun and whimsy. I think last year I talked about... Um, like not really growing up celebrating Halloween. So mm-hmm. if you're interested about more of our like Halloween past, go back and listen to that episode. Do you know the name of it? The name of it was Ethan and the Big Apple. I'm not joking, you guys. That is probably one of the funniest like banters that we ever had was on that episode. I remember like l- that was the first episode I feel like we really recorded where I was like, oh my God, we're actually doing a really great job. Yeah. Because we were still kind of new to this realm and new to Camp Shady Birch with the pod. But the Ethan and the Big Apple, I feel like we really let our freak flag fly with that episode. And people still reference it. I'm like, that is crazy. That was a year ago. Ethan's probably dead, you guys. I don't think he would make it through a New York City winter. Oh, we yeah. said that literally in the same episode because I went back to it to be like what did we talk about in the last year's Halloween episode and we were like he's probably dead it was two days ago winter's bone it's it's not a joke here it's um, chilly but don't worry everybody we're back this Halloween um, to continue on our spooky conversations we never got a chance to talk to you guys about our trip to Salem Massachusetts a couple weeks ago yeah and it was by choice I think we were planning on saving that for this episode anyways because it is really spooky and fun yeah and we Memphis was like back to back with that so we just took that on and then we were like let's save our little Salem conversation for the Halloween episode. So this was Jonathan's second time going. We did go when we first started dating during COVID but it was not fun, not magical. The mass mandates and the lines and it it was just it, it, it was losing some of its luster because it was just a little too I don't know. Organized. It was. All, it was just there were so many people, and I think that's the other thing. Because when we went, we met so many people from across the country, and you were shocked. But I feel like I wasn't really that shocked. I couldn't. So I've gone to Salem my entire life, and we got stopped a bunch for people that like listen to the podcast, people that watch our videos. It was super awesome, and we'd always be like, "Oh, like where are you from?" And I always expect people to be like, "Oh, I'm from this part of Mass, or I'm from Connecticut, whatever." But there was people from Louisiana. Ohio, Chicago, California, people flying in all across the country to visit Salem, Massachusetts. And it's so weird because I'm not from there. I'm from an hour and a half away. But since it's my state, I have a sense of pride about it. Like, why am I proud? I'm like, oh, you know, like it here. Like, I couldn't be further away. Like, I'm an hour and a half away in Massachusetts where I live. Yeah. Where I, where I lived, where I'm from. But I don't know why I'm like claiming it. And that's the other thing is why you're surprised and I'm not. It's because you grew up there and I feel like you thought of Salem one way, but I was like, I had never been to Salem yeah. in the Midwest and I was watching Hocus Pocus. I was like, I want to go there one day. So it's like, it has been a big deal to people all over the place, not just there. That's how I feel like being from Philly. Everybody's like, let's go see the Rocky stairs. I'm like, okay, that's annoying. Like they're just literally stairs or like the Liberty Bell. Like, okay, there it is. It's a bell with a crack in it. Like, let's get it fixed. I'm not being ableist, you guys, but like, if you don't have some sort of like issue with like stairs, running up the Rocky stairs is not hard. You don't really? I, the Wait, way, did you do it? I Yes, I was with you when I did it. No, because there was one day that you went when you saw the Liberty Bell the first time and you did it without me. This Maybe it was that day. The probably. steps are very shallow. It's probably about 45. Like you might get a little like, oof, at the end. But like I know someone that just ran up the Empire State Building stairs for like a charity. That's now, wild. That's wild. So running up the Rocky stairs, I'm like, if okay, first of all, for someone, this is what I really mean by this. For someone who is training for to be a boxer, a fighter, I've never seen the movie. Yes. <laughs> You're in peak physical condition. So let's not pretend that running up this little staircase is really going to be like the, the the ultimate workout exercise. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not even in good shape and I was able to do it. So well, I feel like – He was going up and down and up and down and up and down. Oh, he did it multiple times? He did it multiple times. Oh, so maybe, maybe there was a little bit of finesse when you're doing it multiple. Yeah. I did it once and then a guy at the top who I think was homeless tried to trick me and take my photo. They and do that. And then he was like, oh, well, you have to pay me for the photo. But I was smart enough to be like, no. But I was like, what a hustle. 
Yeah. He was like, hey, I could take your photos to great shot. And then you take your camera back. He's like, oh, that's five bucks. It's like, don't. Don't do that. So you know, crazy. I've always thought, because I actually said this one time, um, kind of taking a left turn here. But uh, I was taking, like, someone came up to you and wanted the picture. So I was like, I'll take the picture. So I took it. And then audibly out loud i said what would you do if i just ran away with your phone and it was supposed to say in my head but it came out like what would you do if somebody's taking your picture and then just ran i would i know i'd run after them really fast i've also never been in a physical altercation like fist fighting and there is this like deep part of me that wants to fuck up a bitch so bad like i want someone to cross me one day and i just really want to fight i'm i'm like i know i can do it and i just feel like i won't live a true life unless i physically like get in an altercation with somebody is that crazy um i want to fight i really want to fight it's a little crazy until you get into the tiff and 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 you're in it i want someone to swing first cuz i don't know if i'll ever have the ability to swing first you can get in more trouble if you're the one who swings first oh of course and i think i know that and i think that's why my body would stop me cuz i don't want the court fees or mm. like or like i don't know the lawsuit but if someone like i want if someone were to like if someone were to really piss me off and swing at me and i had to do it for self-defense i think i would do well Uppercut. even though i have no formal training mm -hmm. i'm not a classically trained fighter i think i have the chutzpah i think i have the pizzazz and the sass to really hurt someone if i needed to this isn't like unprovoked you guys stop being creepy i just want to like fight all right, campers. So if you see us in the wild, you just you take that step up to Counselor Zachariah and just hit him with the uppercut. And I would we'll see never what hit a camper. Stop. No, don't do that. Please don't do that. Okay, back to Salem instead of fighting people. How did we get there? Let's talk about what our favorite thing that we did in Salem was. I feel like we probably have the same favorite thing. Can yeah, we say it? of course. Three, it two, one. The Witch, the Witch Dungeon, Dungeon Museum. Museum. This has been my favorite forever. And I got to take Jonathan this year for the first time. And I was, I knew you would like it because I know you. Yeah. Like, we like stupid stuff. And this museum is so dumb. And it's no shade against the museum owners. Like this museum is just so creepy and so wild. And I'm promoting it in a way that I believe everybody should experience it for themselves. Because Salem has a lot of museums and this one is just like off the beaten trail and for a reason because it's just like living in its own world. So the concept <laughs> of the museum right. was it's an old church, mm -hmm. right? And now they've turned it into what starts off as a live reenactment of a witch trial. So you sit in these pews and on top of the stage is these um, wax figures, almost animatronic, like... Mannequins. 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 Exactly. Yeah. A mannequin. And all of a sudden, a woman comes out and narrates, like, the scene of, like, what's happening for the witch trials. And then two actresses pretend to be, um, like, a part of the trial. One's being accused. One of them is, like, a townsperson. And, and they it's a actually, live reenactment. They said that it was from, like, the actual transcript, which I found very interesting. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Mm -hmm. So while they're doing this whole thing, like, people in the jury behind... Well, I mean, obviously, we're sitting in the jury, but the people on the stage are just mannequins. So they're talking to mannequins. It's very bizarre. And I remember seeing it years ago, and the mannequins used to speak. I don't know if they were broken, but there was no speaking... There was no dialogue with the mannequins. They used to have, like, little... I know vocal recordings. Yeah. But it's the entire time they're like, you're a witch, you're a witch. I can see that little bird flying, that little red devil bird. And the girl's like, you can't see anything. I'm not a witch. And it's so loud. It wasn't as iconic this year because the entire room was filled with people. So I felt like it was like a little less like weird. But the first time I ever saw it, I was with my best friend Carly. And there was six of us in the room and they were doing a full production of this like <laughs> mini scene at full volume. And there was like six groups of us in there, like all like couples and we're all very sporadically placed out. And it was just very intense. Like I was like, if I was on an edible right now, I would have a panic attack. It was just so overstimulating. I know. And then you can't leave without them seeing because they like play to the audience, like including you in it. The craziest thing about the witch trials is you guys, is that if someone accuses you of being a witch and they're saying like they see all all these things that you're doing that are like witch like it's like a known fact that unless you are being targeted by this witch you can't see it so this girl who's accusing the girl of being a witch she's like she always has this little bird on her hand or like she's doing these little spells but it's a known fact that she's being targeted you so she I mean? was the only one who could see the bird so it's like how do you even fight that in a court of law being like well you can't see because you're not being targeted but i can see because i'm being targeted i swear i saw the bird did you? I swear I did. I that means you're being targeted by Goody Proctor. So after they conclude the live reenactment of the witch trial, they bring you into the basement where they have, it's the witch dungeon. So they have these built-in rooms of what it looked like to be in the jail 
after being accused of being a witch. But it wasn't, it's not like the real dungeon. So they actually had one of the beams from the original dungeon. And I don't know why I just went up and touched it. I shouldn't have done that. I touched it too. But I feel like it just has really bad vibes, you know? I know, but I think everybody touches it. It's kind of like, well, might as well. Yeah, it was very morbid. Well, the whole thing was very morbid. It wasn't a happy story for anybody. Do you know about the, um, like, the fungal theory? Oh, no, what people getting bacteria? So I, I had heard of it, and I looked it up. So there's this thing, it's called ergot, or it might be ergo, E-R-G-O-T. And it's basically this, like, fungus that grows either in like a wet water supply or like in wheat and barley and stuff so there's a lot of historians who say that like they're pretty positive that in the the 1690s in massachusetts like this fungi was running wild and it hold on wait i have it written down uh toxicologists know that ergot poisoning can lead to convulsions spasms hallucinations hallucinations crawling sensations on the skin and erratic behaviors so it could have just like manifested in the water and that could have been why the whole town just got affected yeah so it sounds like they were on like a big old like acid trip together yeah essentially pretty much listen i have been scared and spooked on a mushroom trip myself let alone thinking a colonial woman dressed in her traditional garb She's not ready for that. I'm not even ready for it when I when I take it myself, let alone these people who aren't even like trying to get fucked up. Right. Imagine <laughs> we have like the understanding of how shrooms work, but back then they didn't. So everybody's just like, that shit was so real. And they were going through it at the time. Well, rightfully so. You came and stole people's land and then we're like, oh, it's not working out. The it's, land is cursed. It kind of was karma for mm-hmm. real. But um, sounds fun. <laughs> all that to say salem was fun it's really commercialized and spooky and i love that i I've, th- I've seen a lot of people this year complain about how busy it is guys it's a tourist attraction what do you expect like get over it deal with it it's not that serious just like wait in line enjoy the process like yeah. why are people complaining about lines like you're there too what you, so no one else can be there but you can be there like that's so annoying everyone wants to enjoy it so wait in the line like yeah. i don't know this is just it's the cards you're being dealt with because you picked up the, the deck of cards to begin with and also you got to remember the town wasn't built for this i thought it was interesting that the girl told us that was doing like the, the the storytelling of the town that up until like the 80s the town was really ashamed of the witch trials and it wasn't something they ever like if you asked them about it they'd be like really offended yeah. and then the 80s they were like wait we could make money off of this we gotta make money off of this there's gotta be a way and then they commercialize the entire thing and now it's like they're booming so it's just funny how like hey don't always be embarrassed lean into it turn it into a business you guys get creative yeah it used to be the skid marks on the shorts of our history and now it's our shining star i love that what else what's the last thing that we did that i think was really fun to tell the campers what did we do we were going to go visit the cemetery but we didn't realize that you had to have a pre-booked like travel guide which i think is so annoying because before it used to just be open they could just walk in the cemetery and like look at the graves but now they have it closed off for private tours to get so you pay for it i was like that's kind of scummy but whatever so we went down this like little trail and they had this like big open like i don't know bazaar like local market a grocer and inside this kind of gift shop they had these tours available and they had this big room and it was like they had this big plaque above where the guy was selling the tickets and i read something like hey 15 minute guided tour something about the spooky halloween of it all and i was like oh that's like fun let's let's do this i asked for it and then we bought our tickets he was like oh go in this room and then we're waiting in this queue that's now it's a bright red lights that are blinking fast and we're hearing screams coming in from <laughs> another part of the building and there's like a mom and daughter waiting to go into this room and the guy's opening the door and he's like okay you guys can go now and they're like i'm so scared and then we get there and i'm like this is the guy to tour. And he laughed in our face and said, no, this is a haunted house. This isn't a guy to tour. Let me see your tickets. He's like, you bought tickets for a haunted house. I signed up for something calm, relaxing fall foliage. I wanted to crunch on the leaves outside and learn a little bit of history. I didn't sign up for this. I was confused. It must have been a multitude of tour options and the place that we were in was the haunted house part of it yeah it was kind of basic and bad i will say like it was just grown men in clown costumes who just wanted an excuse to follow you and scream at you towards the end i was like all right i get it but hey if you pay for it you just gotta do it yeah we didn't really have a choice we were in it well then we just drove home after 
But I love Salem. And I think if you ever consider going, just be okay with the crowds. It's not that serious. And it was, it's nice out. Get a, get a cappuccino and stand in line. It's enjoyable. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements. This is the part of the show where we share articles with you that you might have missed in mainstream media, but we're not going to let you miss them here because we have boots on the ground reporting style for you, even on a Halloween episode. Jonathan, what is your morning announcement this week? <laughs> okay. So uh, this is coming from the New York Post, and it's by Nicholas McIntyre. And again, I'm going to um, to save the title for the end. Okay, let's hear it. So there's this 50-year-old guy. He's uh, from Lithuania, and his name is uh, Adis J, and he lives in the southeastern port city of Alicante, okay. I think it's pronounced. So he's at this restaurant in Spain called El Bien Comer, which I think just translates to good eats, which is pretty basic. Yeah, comer means to eat. It's the verb to eat. There we go. And he ordered a seafood paella and two whiskeys, racking up his bill to $36.80 USD. Okay, so the paella wasn't that expensive, I would say. I would say the whiskeys were probably $8 a glass and the paella was 20 But a paella has a lot of rich seafood in it, so it's always on the pricier side. Nothing better than a fresh paella. <laughs> exactly. So he finishes up his meal and he gets up to leave and the staff is like, hey, whoa, sir, like you're about to leave. We noticed you haven't paid, so you gotta pay. So Adis says, oh, my bad. I'm actually on my way to my hotel to grab my money. I'm not I'm not really from here, but instead of grabbing his money, he grabs his chest and he starts shouting, feeling uh, that he's feeling unwell, and then he collapsed to the ground. So an ambulance arrives uh, at the restaurant, and so do the police and the. E uh, I almost said the ATMs. The EMTs are like, "This guy, he's fine. He's chilling. He's not having a heart attack. His vitals are coming back normal." And the police are like, "Oh yeah, we know this guy." So according to an officer on the scene, Adis J, uh, he goes around dressed in designer clothing and talks by mixing several languages and would usually order a Russian salad, uh, which he seems to like quite a bit. I'm not sure what a, a Russian salad is. I'm not sure either. Is it Russian dressing? Because I love Russian dressing. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but it, this guy likes it. So he actually had been arrested in November of 2022 for basically dining and dashing. And his most recent encounter with the law was September 19th, which was when this was. And he's done this stunt nearly 20 times. Had fake heart attacks? Has had fake heart attacks to get out of paying the bill. That is absolutely insane. Have you ever dined and dashed? I'm going to put you on the spot. No, I've never. And I never will. I, 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 I My mom worked in restaurants my entire life. So I just, I, I know people have done it and I don't think it's funny. Yeah, I don't think it's funny either. It's not like a cute little prank. I've never done it. I would never do it. I would be so uncomfortable if anybody. It's happened to me as a server so many times. That's awful. At Olive Garden. Well, look at the clientele. I'm going to be honest. I worked there for five years. So many people came in there. They were like absolute trash. And then they would leave. They wouldn't pay. It was awful. That's crazy. I saw a TikTok where um, these people left the bar and the two bartenders like chased after them. And the one like jumped over the bar and ran to the parking lot. It was crazy. Also, his excuse of being like, oh, I'm not from here. I'm going to get my cash. It's like, I don't think there's any part of the world where you eat and then leave and come back and pay. Yeah. Like, it's pretty universal. You have to pay <laughs> when you buy something. Like, what? Exactly. But he's been doing this like 20 times. He seems pretty comfortable doing it. Um, so one of the officers uh, who arrested Adis multiple times claimed the man smiles when the police arrive and, quote, he sees himself unpunished because he doesn't care about spending a couple of days in jail prior to a short trial before a judge. Yeah, because he's obsessed with free food. So he's like, oh, what's on the menu this week? Prison, prison guards? <laughs> <laughs> so several of the local restaurants filed a joint criminal complaint against this guy, seeking that he be jailed for two years. However, he had only been jailed for 42 days because of two unpaid fines. Since the restaurant bills aren't too expensive, the man only committed minor crimes, which like I get. It's annoying. He's just finding a little loophole and continuously doing it. Yeah, but if they rack it up like they do at Target when you steal at Target. Did you guys know that? If you steal at Target. Yeah, and you thought you got away with it. You didn't. They're keeping a file on you and then they're going to add up all the things that you've stolen and um, 
it, once it reaches like the felony level, that's when they'll like prosecute you. Yeah. So they'll watch you steal for like months. Have you ever stolen from Target? Um, no, but I was with my friend who stole condoms from Target. I've stolen. I used to steal a lot from Target. I have, my anxiety <laughs> could never. I really, I just, I really can't do it. When I was like, guys, I've been on my own since I was 18 with no help from my parents. I was like so broken. And there was like periods of time where I would like look at certain items. And this is not right. Okay. I'm just, I'm just genuinely being real here. I remember like looking at chapstick and being like, I don't think I should pay for this. Like, why should I pay $4 for this? That's not fair. And I would like take a chapstick. Was it EOS? No, I was never in EOS. It was probably Burt's Bees. Mm. Yeah, I definitely went in the dressing room and put like something under my shirt on. Like I was bad. I was. I was like 19 and 20. I was like really struggling. This was like going back almost 10 years ago. And in Target, like you've never reached out to work with me. So I can't even apologize. Like I'm sorry, (laughs) but like whatever. I'm sorry. A lot of people have sold for Target. I saw a thing again on TikTok and it was uh, this like small shop and they were like, be careful of fake coffee drinkers. And this girl walks in with like a a little um, coffee cup and she walks around and she gets a dress and she stuffs the dress in the empty coffee cup and puts the lid back on and pretends she's shopping with coffee in her cup. And all the comments are like, hey, we didn't really think about this, but you're giving everybody ideas. And I'm like, honestly, they kind of are. Yeah, that's so true. Got to be careful of those sensors, though. Uh, Okay, so a lawyer chimed in here in this article, and he was, and he says um, he has taken advantage of the legal system with such small fines, unpaid. It's difficult to achieve a larger sentence in prison. Um, So by December second, twenty twenty three. Adis will be a free man and ready to start his con man antics just in time for Christmas. Not that like being like he's going to do it again. Yeah, basically. Well, he's not here. Good luck in Spain. Yeah. Um. So that article title was Lithuanian man arrested for faking heart attack twenty times to avoid paying bill at restaurants. You know what's so crazy about Lithuania? My mom was like, "Oh, we're Lithu- we're we're Lithuanian." And she's done this like so much, so many times in my life where she's like, oh, we're this, we're this. And then I'm always like, well, how do you know? And then she'll find some sort of regional cuisine that they have there. And then she'll be like, well, when I was younger, we would eat this. Which and means, that's that. I know. Like my, my, I don't know. My parents have this like family history that they say one thing and then we did the DNA test and it just like simply wasn't what they thought we were, but they still won't not believe what was the science they're like, no, that's not what I know, though. And it's like, well, now we have the science. Like, me and Jackson, we bought them Ancestry.com and DNA kits, and they didn't do it for a year because they were afraid of what they were going to find out, and they eventually did that they didn't believe. They thought they were more than what they were. Oh. Uh, I feel like a lot of people sometimes really hold on to that and not not wanting to know what they actually are. I know, and that's why I was like, okay, but this is what it is. Like, it's not... It's okay. Like, it's okay that we're 6% French. Like, we didn't know that, and now we do, okay? My dad told us we were Native American. Guess what? We're not. Native American. And then he's like, well, how do we know this is real? I'm like, well, how do we know what... Well, science versus you? Like, yeah, come on, Yeah, versus dad. assumption. But then, yeah, then you can question everything like that. It's like, I don't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. I want to see the swab go through the machine, and then I want proof of whoever engineered the machine that it's real. So long story short on that, we're not Lithuanian. Okay. My mom thinks we are. Good luck, mom. <laughs> Good to know. So uh, you got a story for us. Yeah. So this was really cool. The Guardian dot com like the newspaper i think and the from, galaxy i think they're from the uk the guardian mm-hmm. they did um and uh, they did an article this weekend it was by emma beddington all about working animals in the world okay and it was just really heartwarming and very um i don't know educational i love that i wanted to share what i found out i just find it all to be so fascinating because humans don't want to work but yet we make animals work not okay, but also interesting. Are they paid handsomely? Not really. You'll find out. So let's start off with my favorite animal that's currently employed. Um, ferrets. <laughs> okay. Ferrets are electricians in some parts of the world. So especially in older buildings or buildings that are like made in complicated areas, they have to run wires to do things like uh, electrical work or broadcasting or whatever. So they'll ha- they'll put a little harness on a ferret and have a little string attached to it and it will 
climb into these incredibly tight spaces and find a way to get to the other side because ferrets are naturally curious animals and they don't ever like really want to turn around which sounds so crazy like they don't want to turn around they're like no i'll find a way so they'll like weave under an old old building to get electrical work done all for a little bit of salmon oil on the other end and that's how they're paid in salmon oil yeah so the girls are really good at getting in tighter spaces because they're smaller but the boys are better at like um things that are a little like need a little bit more strength because they're stronger that's a little sexist but they're all very valuable hmm. um there was one very iconic moment that a ferret helped um navigate that i have to tell you about was it 9-11 um no in 1981 in the saint paul's cathedral they needed to run wires like through the building underneath of it to do national broadcasting for prince charles and diana's wedding <gasps> So if we didn't have the ferrets, that wouldn't have had an that wouldn't have had like an international broadcast. It like helped do the wires through the church. I am literally shocked. Why have we never heard of that before? Well, I don't know. I'm here to tell you today. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. We need a plaque with that guy. What? I wonder what his name was. And He's it, probably dead by now. Oh my god. So sad. There's probably so many more that are like iconic, but now that I'm thinking about it, this was the Guardian, so they're obviously going to go through like UK history. Yeah. There was other ones too, but I was like, that was one that like really was like, oh wow. I think that's so cute. I picture them with their little um, utility belt on and like a like a gray jumper. Oh, of little course. Gray jumpsuit and they're just crawling through it like, hey, I got to do what I got to do. I got lunch break after this. Yeah, they're clocked in and they're ready. There was one um, ferret for one specific job. I didn't recognize the, the project, but apparently it's famous in the UK. Um, but her name was Felicia the ferret. That's cute. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's a good name for a ferret. I you like can on Felicia, count on her. Um, moving forward, there also were these, like, I don't know how I feel about these, these bat librarians. Bat? Yes. Like spooky bats. Halloween episode, guys. Um, <laughs> the Baroque jo- Jonina Library at the University of Coimbra in Portugal um, it has like a really old library collection. And these bats have been living there since the 18th century. And they're there to eat the bugs that could potentially harm the old books. Oh, like a like a bookworm. Yeah, like a bookworm. Um, they don't really need them as much now. Now it's kind of like a fun thing for the library to have. But every night they roll out they roll out these like scrolls to cover the tables because the bat poop can really ruin the wood. So they just let them freely fly every night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they eat the bugs, so the bugs don't eat the books. Oh, okay, that's nice. Or they could just get the little zapper that we plug into the wall. That's why I feel like they don't really need the bats anymore, but they're like, hello, they've been here since the 18th century. Yeah, what are they going to do if they go out of the front? They're just like, we don't know what to do in the world. Like, my ancestors grew up in this library. Yeah, like, they have squatter rights. That's cute, but I feel like it would be really annoying. Well, they sleep during the day, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so they probably wouldn't be that annoying. Yeah, and I don't think they're just, like, hanging at the entrance of the library. They're probably, like, tucked away somewhere deep in the catacombs. Oh, true, and they bring them out on a little trolley. Yeah, and they're like, hello, time for my shift, looking for a mosquito. And then they just fly around. Maybe, Maybe you find one in the morning who didn't make it back, and he's reading... Judy Bloom. Well, they're Portuguese, so they'd be like, oosh, boosh, gadoosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all the Portuguese money used to grow up with. Um, next, coming up, there's two There's two animals that work in the winemaking industry. I'm interested. Um, ducks and spiders. Okay. So um, we'll start with the ducks. At the Virgin Node Low Winery in South Africa, pest control on the vines is responsible of a flock of more than 1,000 Indian runner duck soldiers. These ducks are so cute. They kind of look like geese, if that helps, but they're gray. Um, they're really pretty. They look. They eat the aphids and the pests in a 14-day vineyard cycle. So they put them in different areas in like a loop. So they would eat all the pests. But they do get to like have a break during harvest because they know they'll eat the grapes too. Uh-oh. So like on their little like vacation, they get to like go in the lake and cute. like eat, hang out at the farm. And then they come back when it's like time to replant. And also these, there's these crazy spiders. This was insane. Like the pictures are really doing it justice. Um, the giant cobwebs in the Rioja Valley in Spain. So um, one of the biggest like uh, predators for old bottles of wine, like antique bottles of wine, are these moths that want to eat the corks. Oh. So the let they let these spiders like cobweb up this entire like old wine cellar so that they can't get to the um get the to corks. the corks. Well that's smart because what else are you gonna do? I guess they could just put wax over the corks. Yeah, but these are like antsy so they probably don't want to like disturb them. These are like really old bottles. Okay. Well that's smart. I've always wondered what it's like to crack open a bottle of, like, 50-year-old wine. Like, is it that good? We were watching, um, what the hell was that show with Kimberly J. Brown? 
Red ro- Rose Red. Rose Red. We were watching that. And at the very end, I didn't realize there was wine in the building the whole time. But I was like, is that good wine? If it's been sitting in an abandoned, chilly, chilly, spooky haunted mansion. Yeah. People would say that's good wine. You don't want it. You definitely don't want it in a hot room. You want it in a chilled room. Because like then it stops like bacteria. How old is too old? Or, like how old is that? It depends on how they bottled the wine. It's really intense. Me and my mom always talk about this. We're like, hey, like I don't care how expensive a bottle of wine is. It doesn't matter to me. Like at some point like it's just it's good or it's not you know Mm -hmm. like i've had a really great bottle of wine that was twenty dollars so why would i spend three thousand dollars on a bottle of wine it just seems like excessive and maybe because i've never tried it campers let us know if you're out there drinking really expensive wine like i don't think my palate is refined enough we're going as ruby tuesday and appleby like clearly we're not in the same category as three thousand dollar bottles of wine. Well, I will say I am interested in the two thousand three Dom Perignon. Me too. Thanks, Mary Cosby. <laughs> um, the last was rats, and we I think we knew rats were working. Yeah, rats have historically been the biggest workers in the animal class. I feel, but um, it was really cool. Some of these rats they sniff mines like landmines. Yeah, so I covered a story like maybe last year about the I think yeah I think there were rats that would disengage the bombs yeah. or whatever. Well, they can scratch at the surface where the bomb is, but they're not like heavy enough to like activate the bomb. So like, oh, there's a bomb there. Um, but I thought it was even cooler that they do diagnostic testing specifically um, for tuberculosis. So they only work like 20 minutes. Like the mice come out and they're like, hey, I'm going to like scratch and sniff of their paws over like a... So like this is how it works. There's like a hundred tuberculosis samples on like a table and if a rat pauses over a sample for more than three seconds, they know it's positive for TB. But this would take like a technician like up to four days to do what they can do in 20 minutes. Oh, so they're they have their doctorate. Yeah. And I love the then they go back to then they go back home. They're like, I want some banana, I want some peanut butter, I want something high fat, and I'm gonna go back to bed. That makes me so sad that people still test on animals. It really does. Well, I don't think they're testing on animals. I think the animals are doing the testing. No, no, no. Not in this situation. I'm saying this situation is proving how, like, smart they are and, like, self-aware that it has – they have doctorates. Like, come on now. They just don't have the certification. I did think growing up when they say that, oh, like, this product tests on animals. Like, I thought they were putting lipstick on, like, the pigs. Sometimes they do. It's not really, though. It's more of, like, the chemical components that they're testing on their skin. Mm -hmm. But I thought they were giving, like, the final product, like – opening up the compact and like putting on bronzer like Miss Piggy on a goat like they're not that's not how that works it's really not they do it in a different way we have gorgeous goats everywhere it's not good but at least I know more now yeah true so next time you look at your dog that hasn't done anything all day except fart and eat think to yourself hey I'm gonna trade you in for a ferret because at least this thing can clock in (laughs) grab your bug juice and bear spray campers it's time to pack it up and take a hike Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. So I was on TikTok, as I do, take a shot every time I bring up TikTok on this episode, and I saw this video, and it was from 1994, and it was the lead singer of Mazzy Star, which I thought was called Mazzy Star, but that it's a band, Fade Into You. You probably know the song. But she's singing, and I go to the comments, and there are endless comments of everybody not talking about the performance or anything but basically saying look at life with no phones zero phones in this everybody's just living their life and vibes we need to get back to this time man internet really killed us and i'm just i feel like it's such a tired take do you know what i mean so the video was from the 90s is what you're saying yes and everyone was commenting on the fact that no one was on their phones you know why no one was on their phones there were no phones if there were camera phones at the time you know everybody would literally be on them and also like what do you think you're there was a camera in the audience clearly because how do you think this video was recorded yeah and what are you doing right now in this moment you're on your phone exactly that's what i wanted to say is like you live the life on plugs if you want to people do that and i have no problem with that all of the comments were like this. Yeah, it's just it's just weird behavior. I, I don't know. What's the obsession with getting back to a time that it's not here anymore? Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. I don't I don't get it. I, I, it's a tired take, like you said. And I wish I would have shown you a picture of what Hope Sandoval. I have like. no idea who this band is. I know you're going to try to sell me on. I'm telling you, I do not know who these people are. Well, she's giving like um like lana del rey vibes and somebody commented hope sandoval smoldered so lana del rey could smoke and i thought that was funny and oh, you that would appreciate cute. that 
Um, so there were other videos that I started getting because obviously I interacted with this one and TikTok's like, oh, you want more of this? And I kind of do. But <laughs> do you ever get the videos of kids like in the 90s and like the early 2000s in high school? Yeah. So I got those. And of course, the comments again are like, I'd kill for this type of fun again. So, girl, maybe go to therapy. If you aren't having fun in your life, maybe just find something that makes you happy in life. You're not going to go back to that time. Yeah. And also for, I'm going to be honest right here for us, our whole business revolves around the internet. And also I'm gay and something tells me it wasn't as fun to be gay in that moment. You yeah. know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, it sounds like <laughs> exactly. bullying. So it always seems like the person who wants to get back there, it's like, well, why? Let's really focus on why you want to get back there so bad. No phones, no addiction. People were happy in their own way. It's like, oh, I totally forgot addiction wasn't invented until 2004 when they unveiled the Motorola Razr. I will say, though, I do believe that people should stop recording concerts as much as they are. And maybe I'm speaking for myself. Who is going back and looking at the concert footage? Like, are you really going back in bed at night being like, wow this moment like i never look at it so i stopped taking videos uh, same with fireworks it's like i really don't need more videos of these fireworks i'm never gonna i used to take so many pictures of fireworks back when i had my flip phone that was my nostalgia and then you find that you do get when you take photos of fireworks there is one photo that you're like it was worth it yeah and maybe make it your background for a little bit and then you're like wait this is like hurting my eyes <laughs> it's too much it's a little blurry too like what the fuck i do agree with your take though i think it's take a hike it's like okay say something more interesting i don't know why it just like it got under my skin and then i found myself like looking for it so i could be mad maybe is, i need some therapy i don't think so this is the point of take a hike it's to just be a bitch yeah You're and it's, a bitch. let me I, i'm all for nostalgia and you yeah, know you a are. simpler time but i don't know just to comment it on uh a social media app that you had to create an account for and you, go through captcha and verify your email like something's telling me that like you're okay with technology like just let it go what is the theory on like reading comments that make you upset that you want to continue to read it like what's the science behind that wanting that negative reinforcement because you read a comment that pissed you off and that made you triggered you to read more comments and it really did everyone's like that what's the science there uh, well as a scientist myself i'm gonna have to say that um hate fuels hate and opposites attract so it's just kind of when it comes down to the brass tacks of it all it, the proof is in the pudding. I'm going to ask the rats. I think the rats would know. The rats would know. They have more of a doctorate than I. They're clocked in, everyone. Okay, so that is my take a hike for those people who just really have a lot to say about nothing. It's a tired take. That's all I'm saying. So what have you got? My take a hike are nacho tables. <laughs> nacho tables need to be stopped. Okay. Th this viral trend has gone on for too long, and I'm disgusted. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's when people take an entire, like, dining room table and cover it with foil and then proceed to cover the entire thing with chips and cheese and beef and it's a big community nacho table culturally for centuries here right people have had community food tables and that's not the take here i'm talking to the people in america who are covering a table in tostitos chips and then cold shredded cheese hot beef and putting some dips in the middle and saying, go crazy for white people taco night. It's so gross to me. How does that cheese melt? It doesn't. Everything cools off so quick. It's a ice, ice cold taco table. It's absolutely disgusting. It's unsanitary. And you know they're like, okay, we're gonna take a video of this and post it on Facebook. And they do. They got it and they got to share it. And it's gone beyond the, the nacho tables, you guys. I've now seen the spaghetti table. No. Which is a complicated meal to eat on a plate, let alone reaching into a big hot pile of pasta with the family in the middle of the table. Now, how the hell are they making that much pasta? Yes. It's you, wasteful. You got to have like four pots on the burner to to be able to, to fill the whole table. Well, they're not doing it as much as the nacho table, for sure. It, it definitely is smaller than that. But they're just putting a, bo a boiling hot pasta on the table, covering it in hot sauce and meatballs. And it's just, everyone puts, puts a fork in the middle. It's, I don't know. I don't think we need to do that. I don't, there's other ways to eat for fun. And you know, I, you, I, you know, I love fun eating. I do, but this is not as dirty. Remember the seafood crab boil I, I showed you? Don't. This guy did it, except he covered his table in newspaper so you know when he poured the hot seafood boil on the newspaper, that thing, that the 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 ink 
was leaking into the potato, the crab legs, the lobster. Well, what I will say, I know if there is a food that people are going to do it, I know it's going to be a seafood boil because I feel like that is traditionally like how they do it. I, I don't know what they do it on, but yeah, newspaper doesn't seem right. Because even if you like touch a newspaper for too long, you got ink all over your fingers. Yeah. And maybe there's like the right kind of paper, but this was the classifieds. Yeah. I was seeing cars for sale. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't like a food safe newspaper, I could tell. The family circus comic strip. His comments were like, okay, I don't even know a lot about seafood boil, but everyone's like, this looks so bad. And I was like, not him just being dragged. Yikes. I love a seafood boil. Shit, now I'm hungry for it. I think you're supposed to keep a lot of the sauce to dip in as you eat. And he just poured that all over the table. I'm like, you know the varnish is off that table. His oh, table's ruined. Absolutely. That Ikea table is donezo. Yeah. I just, I really am sick of seeing these. They gross me out. And I do hate watch them when I, they come up. See, and that's the thing is that this week we're really just feeding into the hate watching of it all. We can't help it. We're human. We are. Um, and Camber's out there, if you have done that, I think you just need to take some time and reflect on yourself and just think, why did I why did I dump out nachos on the table? It was a real thing during COVID, which was the time to be the most safe when it came to food safety and community <laughs> eating. Um, but I think now we've learned. Hopefully. If you tried it, okay. We all make mistakes. But are you continuing to do it? Those mm. are the people I'm looking at, pointing fingers at. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we share a little bit what we've been crushing on, what we love, what we've been thinking about, what we want to kiss. You get it. I'll go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay. So I actually had this in mind before I decided to put on this Halloween costume. So my crush of the week is Carousel Intensive foot repair. I've never done a product before and I know it sounds like why the fuck would this be your thing? And I, I'm sure you guys have walked past it a million times in CVS, but I swear by this stuff. It's a Halloween episode. You want to jump scare? Take off your sock. Take a look at those tootsies. They're probably gross and, and denied. Denied? What does that mean? You've neglected them. I meant neglected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Sometimes the heels get a little chalky. They get a little crispy. A little crunch and it's like hello they want you you always have very soft feet you're really into foot care i, I and we're not I into foot play so it's interesting i try i try my best okay so this is what you guys are going to do it's totally not expensive uh this is not an ad this should be an ad like it really should but this is a nighttime routine so get ready when you're about to wind it down you're going to fill your bathtub if you don't have a bathtub, get like, I don't know, a cat litter box or something. Like one of those foil things. Something you should be putting uh, nachos into instead of the table. You're going to soak your feet in a little bit of Epsom salts for like maybe, if you listen to music for like two songs, you're good to go. We're going to get that pumice stone and we're going to fucking go to town on those corns. You've been neglecting them. It's time to take care of it. And then you're going to take a scrubby brush with some soap and just really clean out your nasty, nasty feet. So then you're going to pat them dry, take that carousel, put it on the bottom of your foot only, and then you're going to put a sock on it. And then when you wake up the morning the next day, you're going to have the softest feet. I'm not even kidding. Like one use after one use, you're going to see the difference. I swear by it. I swear. Softer feet. There's no, You don't want to be laying down. I'm not going to be cuddling you and have my nasty, crusty feet scrape your leg. It's happened before. Um, I do think, though, a lot of the prep and how the product is successful is in the prep. Like, you really, if you want it to work really well, you have to get in that soaking. You have to get in that crunching and that scrubbing. Um, the sensation of this cream on your feet with the sock on is a little jarring. And I think you need to speak to that, to be honest with the campers. Have you? Did you use it before? Did I make you use it? One time you made me do this entire process. I don't think it worked as well. And that's why I'm saying I don't think my like scrubbing was as good as it could have been. Yeah. And I think this is just something you have to get past because I hate getting out of the shower and putting on dry clothes on wet skin. It's really gross. That should be a take a hike. So it doesn't feel that like good, but it's it's worth it because you're going to bed anyway. It's just, just one night, right? You're not doing this every day. Uh, you can, but I, don't put it like, don't cover your feet. Do, don't cover your feet because I think it's like a little too intense for the soft tissue of your skin on the top of your foot. At least that's what the directions say. So I've never done that. I don't I, think you need to be doing this routine every single day. No, no, no. Just when your feet are feeling rough. So if it's like, two nights in a row, maybe three nights in a row, and your feet are going to be great. The, it's like the same formula they use for, there's this hand stuff that's for um, 
like the working man gojo makes it i used to sell it at my old job so like it's just like intensive repair that i don't know what the hell is in it but on like the bottom of your feet and the palms of your hand it just makes them so buttery soft yeah your feet are soft and you treat yourself. You feel so much better. I'm like, don't talk to me. My feet are fucking soft, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I love it. And I thought I would share because I, I've had it. Um, it's been a staple of mine for quite some time. And now that I'm afoot, I feel like right now is the most appropriate time to do it. We're also entering um, the winter seasons when I feel like, you know, more people are taking care of their feet in the summer, I think, because of flip flops. You got to show them off in public. Can you imagine going to Applebee's in public with your flip flops on and your feet are fucking nasty? Like, that's disgusting. My friend did a foot mask and she bought it from, I think, a Lush. It could have been Lush, maybe. I'm not sure. It was from a store. It was Ulta. And the girl was like, hey, I just did this exact foot mask. Just so you know, you can't have your feet exposed for like a week because they're going to be peeling so bad. And she chose to do a foot mask in the middle of summer. So for like a week mm. of that summer, her feet were like peeling. I'm like, that's violent. I've seen those like the chemical peels. Let that be known that this does not do that. It's just like a very intensive ointment. But that's really gross because when does it stop? What are your thoughts on the little fish tanks in the mall? Are those illegal? I don't know. Is it? I think I read somewhere that those are illegal, where the little fish come up, you put your feet in the fish tank, and they eat your little nasty foot. I saw horns. the KO, I saw the KOP mall. I know, but was that illegal? I don't know. Uh, I've never done it. I don't think that's something I would enjoy doing. All right, all right. What yeah. about you? What do you think? No, I'm not, don't touch my feet. Don't touch my feet. This stuff works good. You love it though. It works I, good on you. I, thank you. I've also never done like a, a pedicure. I don't know. I just don't want other people touching me. I, do, I feel a little, it's vulnerable. It's my me time. I can do it myself. I don't, I don't need acrylics on my toenails. Well, that's why you do it at home. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to share that camper. So there is no excuse for you to have nasty, crusty, dusty, disgusting, mm -hmm. cracking, dry, stinky feet this winter. Okay. <laughs> it's carousel <laughs> intensive foot repair. Jeez. Dragging them. So, what are you crushing on? Um, this week I'm crushing on stretch limos. Oh, okay. I just really miss them. I miss when we used to get into the stretch limos and we didn't have our phones. Oh, <laughs> see, I miss a simpler time. I just thought they were so campy. Like, I just want them to have a comeback. But I did a lot of research and I don't think they're ever coming back why there's just a lot of things at play here okay so let me talk about why i love a stretch limo before Please. i go into the research i found um they cut they 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 bring back a simpler time i want everyone to think right now when was the last time you were in a limo have you been in a limo yeah of course i was only i never rode in a limo i got to peek inside you didn't go in a limo in prom no, I drove a 2003 Chrysler Sebring convertible. You've never been in a, a limo? A stretch limo? Never. I stuck my head in once. My babysitter. Wait, that's crazy. Yeah, my babysitter's like boyfriend or something had a stretch limo and I stuck my head in and I said, there's a freaking VCR in here. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing. I think people were really familiar with them in like the 80s and the 90s because you would like, or like high schoolers would go to prom and then that's when I last was in the limo. I think I went to a wedding in one, but I'm like, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it might have been a van. And that's still popular. But there's been a lot of, like, reasons why the limo is dead. Okay. First of all, um, the introduction of the, like, the better SUV. SUVs really got more classy, nicer, easier to work with. And a lot of the famous people who were using lim limousines didn't like how they were so, like, easy to spot. Like, people would stop and wait to see who was getting out of the limousine. So, but when you're in a nice, like, a nice SUV... No one checks. Right. That's so true. It's like we're trying to be inconspicuous and we're trying to be quiet and hush hush and nothing screams I'm a celebrity quite like a limo that's taking up the length of four cars. Well, you have to think about it. Back in the day when you needed to plan a car ride, you would call the limo, right? They'd either take you to a special event or if you were like a really rich person, they would bring you to your meetings all day. But now we have Uber. Mm. So it's taken away that need to plan like a, a nice ride somewhere. Why get a limo where you can get like an Uber X or an Uber Black or like, I mean, an Uber Black or whatever, instead of like comparing limousine companies on Google and like calling to schedule a ride. It's just like, it's more complicated now. Also, limousines are not safe. When was the last time you wore a seatbelt in a limousine? Never. Like never. And there's been like some crazy like accidents. 
Like 18 people died in a car accident in 2018 at upstate New York. In one singular limousine? Yeah. The brakes oh, didn't no. work and they went into like a ravine. Oh no. 100 miles an hour down a hill. Oh my God. And after that, New York like completely changed all the laws on limousines. And they went by and like checked all the limousine companies and like made sure that their limousines were up to par for safety standards. And most of them weren't. So it like shut them down. So it's a belief that we'll never really have stretch limousines ever again. They only make up 1% of services offered, less than 1% of services offered by limousine companies. Because the companies still exist because they do like, but they all do like, I don't know, like party buses or they do like car service. Yeah, when I was, um, when my grandmother passed away, we had limos and I thought that we were going to pull up in a stretch limo. I was like, that's kind of crazy. You're going to go to to my mom's burial site in like a stretch limo, but it wasn't, it was like a normal car that was just a limousine. Yeah, like limousine is like the service offered, I think. Yeah. But the stretch limos are gone. Also imagine being like in your party dress with a glass of champagne in one hand and a bottle of champagne in the other and having to duck down and walk across the stretch limousine to like get to your seat. Like that doesn't sound cute or comfy. You need to understand something. There was something very fun about it. I know it doesn't make sense, but when you were a senior in high school during prom or anyone that ever had an experience in a limousine, it was exciting. Mm. It was fun. It just felt different, you know? So it wasn't of, safe, though. What kinds of things are, like, back there? Like, what would ideally be at, at your fingertips in the back of a stretch limousine? Like, I said VCR. That's applicable. Typically bench seating, some sort of light strip underneath your seat that changes colors from purple to turquoise. Um, usually some sort of ice chest. That you can put your champagne on ice. Classic. A variety of cup holders, a small television set. Um, If you're lucky, you might get some light changing ceiling. That's fun. Um, An aux cord. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask about the music. Can you do karaoke? Because what if you have the TV back there, everybody? You don't need a mic. Like we proved that last night when we were trying to kill an hour before Real Housewives of New York. You can just sing into a remote if you have the words on the screen. It might be hard for everyone to see the screen. We'll just learn the words. Yeah, I'll pick a song you already know. You're right. This is your limousine, not mine. Yeah, I just, I, I miss them. And now that I've done some research, I don't think I'll ever experience them again. And maybe that's for the best because they're not very safe. But it was so campy and stupid and kitschy. And I think like we're never going to have that again. It kind of seems like the industry is dead. And they're not even really available anymore. Do you remember seeing a Hummer limousine? <laughs> yes. That would take my breath away. If you ask 13-year-old Zachariah his thoughts on a, a Hummer limousine... I would do anything to be on one. How do you make a right on red with those things? I'm not even sure. Think, yeah, think about driving through like San Francisco or like Brooklyn with that. You wouldn't believe the articles I was reading with the New York Times about the death of the limousine and what it would look like to be on any New York City street in like the 90s and how common it was. They were everywhere. And that's why like when you ask people who are older who remember them, like they will say like it wasn't like – even when we were in high school, they were already dying then. They they really had a like a, a like a I don't know dropping point during the Great Recession of like 2008, 2009. That's yeah. when people were like, this is like just so unnecessary. But in the 90s, like New York City was full of limousines. Every fleet had like 15 of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Limousines and taxis, yellow taxis everywhere. Yeah, between the upgrades of beautiful SUVs being more spacious and nice, um, Ubers and the increase in need and safety. That killed the stretch limousine. That so is sad. Radio killed the radio store. Uber killed the stretch limousine. It was video killed the radio store. Oh. Oh, that makes more sense, doesn't it? What song's been sucking your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. It's the part of the show where we share songs that have been stuck in our head all week. Um, did you have any good songs this week? What was your song? My camp song this week, to me at least, is innately fall. And I feel like it wouldn't apply to everybody. And that's why I think it would be a good song to choose. So my song is Head Over Heels by Tears for Fears. I need you to sing a little because I'm not catching it immediately by the title. Something happens and I'm head over heels. I never find out. Till I'm head over heels. You know the beginning where it's like dun 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 dun. I'm gonna uh, have to, I'm gonna have to listen to the, our playlist that's available in the link in the episode description because I'm not really picking this up, but that doesn't mean that other people aren't. So it's for everybody else this week. You're gonna know it the second you hear it. Um, so to me, it's pretty Halloweeny. I think because I correlate it so much with um, Donnie Darko, 
You ever seen Donnie Darko? Uh, you know what? Embarrassingly enough, I have not. I'm a little Sad. ashamed. Should we watch it this week? I think we should watch it. Is it Halloween? There's a Halloween scene and it takes place, I believe, mostly in the fall. That's enough for me. Yeah. And there's a Halloween scene. Um, and this is, I think it was like the opening scene or something like that. But it's definitely like a main focus. It might be at the end of the movie is this song. So I think it takes me back to that time. And one time I was Donnie Darko for Halloween because in the Halloween scene, he's literally just in a skeleton onesie. And I was like, great costume idea because anyone asked. I'm not a skeleton. I'm Donnie Darko. And two, how comfortable is that? Yeah, a very easy costume to pull off. Yeah, so I did that. And my brother's friend when I was growing up, Scott, he was Frank the Rabbit, who was absolutely terrifying. If you know, you know. And that same night, he told me that if I want to get buff, this is unrelated, but this was on Halloween. He told me if I wanted to get buff, that I have to drink a small glass of vegetable oil to get buff. And I really wanted that for my journey. Um, so I did. I believed him. I drank it. And I was stuck to the toilet for the next two days. My mom was so pissed at him. Yeah, that is that is that is the grossest thing. I can't even believe you were able to swallow it. The, oh my God, I drank a whole glass of vegetable oil. It was probably canola oil, honestly. Yeah, either way, that thing is, everything is sliding out. Actually, you were skin tea. Yeah, well, I was like already skinny. I was probably in fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, so we don't need to be pushing that on anybody. Take that yeah. back, take that back. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, so that is my camp song. And I hope everybody really enjoys that. I don't know that song. I need to listen to it. I need to see that movie. And I need to stay away from vegetable oil. Yeah, please, for the love of God. I can't believe I did that. I really chugged it too. I was like, I want to have abs. I want to be comfortable in my body. Not you needing abs in fourth grade. Like nobody needs abs in fourth grade. No, but I was just already soups self-conscious you're looking crazy with your antennae i'm playing with them because they're wired and i'm like might as well give them a little bit of life for the last segment yeah i love that okay what's your camp song my camp song is spooky by dusty springfield sing us a little ditty you may remember oh i'll start with this one oh, yeah i can sing a little bit first in the cool of the evening when everything is getting kind of groovy you call me up and ask me would I like to go with you and see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Great but the part, the part that you guys know is the, when she goes, Love is kind of crazy with a spooky little boy like you. Spooky. Classic. Wait, you guys know I'm a big Dusty Springfield addict. I love her song, Son of a Preacher Man. It's probably one of my favorite songs of all time. And this has become kind of, kind of it's kind of become a Halloween classic by my British queen. So what does spooky mean? <laughs> it's really interesting. So this isn't her song. Oh. It's actually a, not even the first cover. It's the second cover. So initially this was written as a saxophone instrumental song. And then a group by the title Classic IV wrote the actual words to the song spooky. No way. And the song was about a spooky little girl. And then she covered it in 1970 and changed the gender to Spooky Little Boy. So it's not even her song. She's like covering a cover of a added vocal. Okay. So it's like a hand me down, hand me down on Depop. Yeah. But I think she probably has the most popular rendition. Like obviously that's like classic IV is like, or classic four. I'm not sure how you say it. I'm not sure if it's Roman numerals. Um, that's like their most popular song, but it's. Dusty kind of check it. I was like, "Hey, it's my song now, bitches." Mm. It's cool. There's a there's a cover of there's a video of it on YouTube, and Dusty has this very specific aesthetic, and maybe because it was the '60s, where she always performs in these like really classic like TV sets, mm -hmm. like very like hairspray ass, where it feels like a big studio. Kind yeah, of thing. Dolly used to do that, and it was yeah. like a house with a yard and a little fence, and it's like, what's going on here? I don't know, but I'm freaked out. Dusty's a son of a preacher man. She's in the front yard of a willow tree that's like clearly a studio set, and I kind of live for it. Yeah, I think it's so fun. But hers is really cool, and I love her little hand movements. She's just like I think one of British Brit Britain's like best performers of all time, and um, this song is. A always been inherently halloweeny to me it always increases on streams too during halloween but um i think it's great for our halloween episode yeah that's spooky great spooky by dusty springfield spooky little girl like you well that's all we have for you today guys i have to get out of this costume because it's giving me a headache it's pulling my head down like crazy yeah, i'm very uncomfortable make sure you check your candy everybody don't want any razor blades in there i know stop it okay we'll see you next <laughs> week and that with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.